hello and good morning dear students uh, now we are going to study last topic of this chapter number 3 uh, the point is relation between scattering cross sections in laboratory and center of mass system so first of all scattering cross section we already studied definition of differential cross section or scattering cross section uh, in theory of scattering now in laboratory and center of mass frame how this scattering cross sections are related that we are going to study so before that we know that number of particles scattered dn can be written as in center of mass system i okay d omega dash and sigma omega dash you can write this term d sigma dash and d omega dash as as 2 pi sin theta dash d theta dash okay this term multiply by i into sigma theta dash now if you write this dn now here we have written dash notation so dash notation we used for center of mass system so this is for cm system okay now for laboratory system number of particles is 2 pi instead of theta dash you can write sin theta here you can write d theta here i and sigma theta okay now this is for lab system since particles which are scattered in center of mass system and in laboratory system are equal so you can equate these two equations so when you when we equate what you will get 2 pi sin theta dash d theta dash i into sigma theta dash is equal to 2 pi sin theta okay d theta i into sigma theta so 2 pi 2 pi will cancel okay here i i will cancel and you can write sigma theta dash is equal to on the right hand side we will get sin theta into d theta okay if you take this term on the right hand side here you have sigma theta divided by sin theta dash divided by d theta dash now this is equal to sigma theta we can write this sin theta as derivative of cos theta so derivative of cos theta is minus sin theta now to compensate that minus sin we can write minus d by d theta here for this term minus d by d theta dash here we have cos theta dash is equal to d theta by d theta dash now this negative sign is uh, compensated by this negative sign d by d theta here we have d theta okay here we have d theta dash here we have d theta so by using chain rule sigma theta dash is equal to sigma theta into now this negative sign is compensated so this is nothing but derivative of cos theta with respect to cos theta dash okay so call this as equation 1 now we have to differentiate c sigma theta dash so this is scattering cross section in center of mass frame sigma theta this is scattering cross section in laboratory frame of reference now here theta is angle in lab frame frame here theta dash is angle in center of mass frame now we can take relation to find out derivative of cos theta with respect to cos theta dash we can use relation cos square theta is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus tan square theta okay so you know that sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 So, if you take cos square theta common, so we will end up with sine square upon cos square plus one is equal to one. 
so rearranging that equation you will get this equation okay so this is this, uh, nothing but tan square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 uh, now from this equation and using identity relation between angles in lab and cm system we know that relation what is that relation tan theta is equal to sin theta dash divided by m1 by m2 plus cos theta dash okay if you use this relation in this identity you will get cos square theta is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus tan square theta so square of this term so that is sin square theta dash divided by m1 by m2 okay plus cos theta dash square okay now this is equal to so if we simplify this term so this square plus sin square denominator is m1 upon m2 1 plus cos square theta so this term goes to numerator by cross multiplication so we will get m1 divided by m2 plus cos theta dash its square in the denominator you, you will get square of this term plus sin square theta now if you take square of this term so that is m1 upon m2 square plus 2 times m1 by m2 cos theta dash plus plus cos square theta dash and plus sin square theta dash so that is nothing but 1 okay, cos square theta dash plus sin square theta dash now if we take square root of this term so cos square theta its square root becomes cos theta and square root of this is again here we have square and square root of this term is raised to half now in equation 1 we have to take derivative of cos theta with respect to cos theta dash now we are going to differentiate this term with respect to cos theta dash see this is what derivative of cos theta with respect to cos theta dash so to take derivative here numerator is function of cos theta dash and denominator is also function of cos theta dash okay so how we will take derivative so to simplify if you call this term as y okay so to take derivative so derivative of cos theta with respect to cos theta dash is equal to see here we have to use product rule u upon v so how we will find derivative of u upon v so that is u dash v minus v dash u upon v square so u dash means derivative of numerator now here derivative of this term with respect to cos theta dash so if you differentiate this term with respect to cos theta dash so that becomes 1 u dash multiply by v so this term we have to write as it is so we will get y okay y is this term square root of this minus v dash now v dash is derivative of this term okay so if we are taking derivative of this term with respect to cos theta dash now if this term is y then we have to take derivative of this is nothing but since this is square root so this is one half y okay see derivative of this term is what one half multiply by all this term raised to one half minus one so that is this term raised to minus half so derivative of y is become one upon two into y okay multiply by we have to multiply this term since this is function of cos theta dash implicit function so derivative with respect to cos theta dash is nothing but 2 times m1 upon m2 okay now derivative of this term is this multiply by this term okay so here you will get 1 
upon y this 2 2 will get cancelled multiply by m1 upon m2 into multiply by this term so this term is m1 by m2 plus cos theta dash divided by v square v square means we have to take square of this now this is equal to so if we simplify this so cross multiplication is y square okay minus m1 upon m2 okay square if you multiply this term to this term minus m1 upon m2 into cos theta dash divided by y square means square of this term so that is again we can write y square sorry so here if you do cross multiplication so this y square and y square minus this term divided by y so this y and this y square here we will get y cube now y is this term so y square is we have to take square of this term so if you take square of this term so that will become m1 by m2 square plus 2 times m1 by m2 cos theta dash plus 1 okay minus minus this is y square minus m1 by m2 square minus m1 by m2 cos theta dash and divided by y cube means we have to take cube of this term so m1 by m2 square plus 2 times m1 by m2 cos theta dash plus 1 and cube of this is raised to 3 by 2. Now this m1 by m2 square term will cancel okay and here you will get 2 times m1 by m2 cos theta minus m1 by m2 cos theta here you will get only 1 okay this 1 plus m1 by m2 cos theta dash divided by this term m1 by m2 square plus 2 times m1 by m2 cos theta dash plus 1 raised to 3 by 2 okay now if you put in equation 1 okay what we will get if you put in equation 1 we get sigma theta dash is equal to sigma theta multiply by derivative of cos theta with respect to cos theta dash now this is 1 plus m1 by m2 cos theta dash divided by m1 by m2 square plus 2 times m1 by m2 cos theta dash plus 1 raised to 3 by 2. So, this is the relation between scattering cross section in CM system and laboratory system. Now, again here we have to take those cases that we already discussed. So, first of all case 1. What is that case? If m1 is equal to m2 for m1 is equal to m2 what we will have theta dash is equal to theta by 2 ok sorry theta is equal to theta dash by 2 this case we already solved ok in previous section so here we can write theta dash is equal to 2 theta ok and put in equation 2 what we will get sigma theta dash is equal to sigma theta multiply by 1 plus m1 upon m2 is 1 since m1 is equal to m2 so 1 plus cos instead of theta dash we can write cos 2 theta divided by here we have 1 
okay this is 2 times okay cos 2 theta plus 1 raised to 3 by 2 so 1 plus 1 becomes 2 okay now if you take 2 raised to 3 by 2 common so in bracket we end up with 1 plus cos 2 theta raised to 3 by 2 so this is equal to sigma theta divided by 2 raised to 3 by 2 1 plus cos 2 theta raised to 1 and here raised to 3 by 2 so 1 minus 3 by 2 okay so this is nothing but 2 by 2 so this is 2 minus 3 is minus 1 divided by 2 so this is 1 plus cos 2 theta raised to half now using cos square theta is 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2 okay so 1 plus cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos square theta so 1 plus cos 2 theta we can write this term as 2 cos square theta okay so this is nothing but 2 raised to half so 2 raised to 3 by 2 plus half and cos square theta it's square so that is nothing but cos theta so 2 raised to 3 by 2 plus half is nothing but 3 by 2 plus half is nothing but 4 by 2 which is 2 and 2 raised to 2 which is 4 okay so we get relation as sigma theta is equal to 4 cos theta into sigma theta dash so this is the relation for m1 is equal to m2 now for m2 is very very greater than m1 so m1 upon m2 this ratio tends to 0 okay why because m2 is very very greater than m1 then equation 2 becomes in this equation if m1 upon m2 tends to 0 and sigma theta dash is equal to sigma theta this term becomes 0 so numerator is 1 in the denominator this is 0 this is 0 in the denominator 1 raised to 3 by 2 so that is also 1 so 1 upon 1 so we get equation as sigma theta dash is equal to sigma theta so this is the case for m2 is very very greater than m1 okay now with this our theory of third chapter is finished now we will see problems in the next lecture thank you